हरे कृष्णा बांग्ला क्लास पैंडल होते हैं बिग पैंडल बिग पार्किंग एरिया बांग्ला क्लास सेकने होते हैं हरे कृष्णा
Iskan founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Kija Jayom Vishnu Pad Paramhang Sapati Braja Kacharja Astota Sata Sri Shimad Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada Kija Ananti Koti Vaishnava Brinda Kija Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Kija Prem Sikaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adwaita Gadadhar Shiva Sadi Gauda Bhakta Brinda Kija Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gop Gopinata Sham Kunda Radha Kunda Gidi Govardhan Kija Sri Brinda Bandham Kija Sri Navadweep Maya Purdham Kija Sri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Sri Dwarka Dham Ki Jai Sri Mathura Dham Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulasi Devi Ki Jai Samavera Bhakta Prinda Ki Jai Gauda Premanandi all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Vidura Uvacha Gyanam Param Swat Maraha Prakasham Yadaha Yogeshwara Ishwaraste Vaktum bhavan nor hati yati bishnor Vaktum bhavan nor hati yati bishnor Vritya sva vritya rtha krita scharanti Vritya sva vritya rtha krita scharanti Vidura uvacha Jnanam param svatmaraha prakasham Yadaha yogeshwara ishwarasthe Vaktum bhavan nor hati yadhi bishnor 
Pritya Sva Pritya Artha Krita Sharanti Vidura Uvacha Jnanam Param Svatmaraha Prakasham Yad Aha Yogeshwara Ishwara Ste Yad Aha Yogeshwara Ishwara Ste Vaktum Bhavan Nor Hati Yadhi Vishnor Vritya 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 Vidura Uvacha Vidura said Gyanam Knowledge Param Transcendental Swaatma Regarding the Self 
Raha, mystery, Prakasham, enlightening, Yat, that which, Aha, said, Yoga Ishwaraha, the master of all mystics, Ishwaraha, the Lord, Te, unto you, Vaktum, to narrate, Bhavan, your good self, Na, unto me, Arhati, deserve, Yat, for, He, reason of, Vishnu, of Lord Vishnu, Vritya, servants, Svabhritya Arathakritaha, for the interest of their servants, Charanti, do wander. Vidura said, O Uddhava, because the servants of Lord Vishnu, the Lord, wander in the interest of serving others, it is quite fit that you kindly describe the self-knowledge with which you have been enlightened by the Lord himself. Purport by his divine grace. A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. The servants of the Lord are actually the servants of society. They have no interest in human society other than to enlighten it in transcendental knowledge. They are interested in imparting knowledge of the relationship of the living being with the Supreme Lord. The activities in that transcendental relationship and the ultimate goal of life. That is the real knowledge which, which can help society achieve the real aim of human welfare. Knowledge in the matter of the bodily necessities of eating, sleeping, mating, and fearing, transformed into various branches of advancement of knowledge, is all temporary. A living being is not the material body, but, but an eternal part and parcel of the supreme being. And thus, revival of his self-knowledge is essential. Without this knowledge, the human life is baffled. The servants of the Lord, Vishnu, are entrusted. The servants of the Lord, Vishnu, are entrusted with this responsible work. And so they wander over the earth and to all other planets in the universe. Thus the knowledge which was received by Udhava directly from the Lord deserves to be distributed in human society, especially to persons like Vidura, who are highly advanced in the devotional service of the Lord. Real transcendental knowledge descends in the disciplic succession from the Lord to Uddhava, from Uddhava to Vidura, and so on. Such supreme transcendental knowledge is not possible to achieve by the process of imperfect speculation as performed by the so-called learned mundane Wranglers. <clears throat> Vidura was anxious to know from Uddhava that confidential knowledge known as Paramam Stitim, 
in which the Lord is known by his transcendental pastimes. Although Vidura was older than Uddhava, he was anxious to become a servant of Uddhava in the transcendental relationship. This formula of transcendental disciplic succession is taught by Lord Chaitanya also. Lord Chaitanya advises that one receive transcendental knowledge from anyone, whether a Brahmin or a Shudra, a householder or a sannyasi, provided that person is factually conversant with the science of Krishna. A person who knows the science of Krishna is factually a bona fide spiritual master. Om Akyan Timidandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshuru Militan Jena Tasmai Sri Gurabe Namaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Pistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Tatati Swapadantikam Andeham Sri Guru Sri Jutta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Scha Sri Rupam Sagrachataham Sahakana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Safadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padahan Sahakana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanda Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sate Devi Ranamami Hari Priye Kancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Shivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimathe Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Namaste Sarasati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Astatyade Satarine Vidura said, O Uddhava, because the servants of Vishnu the Lord, wander in the interest of serving others. It is quite fit that you kindly describe the self-knowledge with which you have been enlightened by the Lord himself. We are reading today from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 3, Chapter 4 entitled, Vidura Approaches Maitreya, text 25. Hare Krishna. I am 
sincerely grateful and honored to have been asked to make some attempt to serve all of the assembled devotees by reading from this designated verse of Srimad Bhagavatam. And I am feeling most unqualified. Vidura is inquiring from Uddhava. Beginning with this most revealing truth that the servants of Vishnu the Lord wander into the interest of serving others. And Srila Prabhupada in his purport, he begins, the servants of the Lord are actually the servants of society. They have no interest in human society other than to enlighten in transcendental knowledge. It, it is almost as Vidura is giving us the prayer that we should be forever offering to Srila Prabhupada and the beloved servants of his servants. In a unprecedented way, Srila Prabhupada wandered around the world, I believe 12 times, disseminating this transcendental knowledge. And by his influence, in every major language of the world, in all continents of the world, his books, the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, the realizations of all the Acharyas and Parampara have been and are being distributed by tens and millions. And as Vidura is humbling himself before Uddhava, He's begging to be enlightened. The lesson is so deep and profound, it's almost impossible unless we're Paramahamsas to understand what's really being said here. Who is Vidura? to be asking this question. Didn't even need a microphone. <laughs> we are so insignificant. Previously, Srila Prabhupada explains Vidura is one of the twelve Mahajans. Mahajano Yena Gadasa Bandha. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu taught that we cannot understand the path of perfection or realize the perfection of life loving devotional service to Krishna by any other means 
outside of following in the footsteps of the great souls, the Mahajans. We have so many Vedic literatures. There are so many activities to be performed on the basis of the teachings. But they all become pleasing to Krishna when we are applying these principles by following in the footsteps of the great souls. And among the Mahajans, and the person who actually spoke this verse of who the Mahajans are, one of the very inconceivable persons is Yamaraj. How to follow in the footsteps of Yamaraj? <laughs> we, ha we have to actually go deep into this understanding, and I think Vidura is teaching us. <laughs> in his post, internally, he's a fully surrendered soul. Whatever he's doing in the Yamaloka with the Yamadutas, it's with a very pure devotion to assist the Lord in his service within this material creation. But he's considered Lord of death, and he with his team, they keep track of all the sinful activities of everyone. And it's all on record. And however good, what are they called, hacker you may be or know, <laughs> you cannot meddle with the records of Yamaraj. But Krishna tells Sarva Dharman Paritya Mame Kam Sharanam Praja Aham Pam Sarva Papi Pio Moksha Ishame Masaja. When we surrender to Krishna by Krishna's grace, all those files are deleted. <laughs> This material nature of three modes is very difficult to overcome. But one who takes shelter of Krishna, by Krishna's grace we can cross beyond it. And in the sixth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam in reference to Ajamil, he committed so many sinful activities. And the Yamadutas were right there at his bedside at the moment of his death. They're punctual. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much talk about them being late. Where <laughs> they were right there to drag the subtle body and the eternal soul within that subtle body to be punished. And just the expression on their face was part of the punishment to see, to see the Yamadutas. And yet the Vishnu Dutas immediately arrived. They came a little later. Seems like devotees sometimes have their <laughs> perfect, perfect timing. They came just a little late so that Ajamil could see the wrath of the Yamadutas. And by doing it this way, he, he would take very seriously what they were about to say. And they didn't talk to him, they talked to the Yamadutas. He chanted the name of Narayan. But the Yamadutas, are, they're actually quite learned. They're 
students of Yamaraj, of Mahajan, in their own ways. He was calling out for his son. He wasn't calling out for the Lord. The name of Narayan is non different than Narayan. And the Yamadutas had to go back to Yamaraj. Who are these people we saw today? How does anyone have a power greater than you? We have seen your power over all living beings and humanity within this universe. And those beautiful verses from the sixth canto, Yamaraj is not only glorifying the holy name of Krishna, but he's glorifying every devotee and every living being who is chanting the names of the Lord. He orders Yamaduta, never, unless you want to be punished by me. <laughs> and we'll all get punished by Lord. Never bring to me anyone who has bowed his head before a Vaishnav. Never bring to me anyone who has chanted the names of the Lord. So yes, we hear so many things about Yamaraj, but in Srimad Bhagavatam we get this wonderful glimpse of the wisdom and love of Krishna and faith in Vaishnavas that Yamaraj has. Srila Prabhupada describes that there was a sage named Mandavya, Mandavya Muni. And some thieves, they robbed some place and the police were looking for him and they hid in the ashram of Mandavya Muni. So the police caught them all and arrested the sage also and sentenced him to be pierced to death with a lance. And they were just about to do it. Here is Mandavya Muni about to be extirpated, about to be killed. When the king heard about it, he stopped it and let him free. Such a powerful Muni, he went to Yamaraj. How could you let this happen to me? Yamaraj, it's not that he necessarily has to check the records. He's so intelligent, he knows, he keeps track. He said, when you were a little boy, you pierced an innocent ant to death with a straw. The money. He said, how could you hold me so responsible when I'm an innocent little child? I didn't know better. He was so angry. He cursed Yamaraj. <laughs> to lose his position and to, be, to take a lower birth in this world. Yamaraj became Vidura. And here, where he's not performing his role, his duties in the service of the Lord, we see what is his actual nature in Vidura. It's very interesting. This discussion we're reading today is between Uddhava and Vidura. And it's taking place on the bank of Yamuna. Yamaraj is the son of Surya and his beloved sister is Yamuna, who comes as the river and they're both performing their service. 
And in Vrindavan, especially in Mathura, there's big festivals celebrating the love between the brother and sister, Yamaraj and Yamuna. They have so much respect and so much affection for each other, but they have very different natures. Yamaraj, his service is justice, rectification, punishment. And Yamuna, the goddess of the river, anyone, Yamara, actually Yamuna asked Yamaraj in Mathura for a benediction because he was, she honored him as elder brother and he was honoring her as sister. She asked for a benediction. Whoever sincerely comes to take shelter of me and bathes in me or drinks my water, give the blessing. They never have to see you. That's a transcendental way of praising her brother. <laughs> because she's actually glorifying your service is so complete and thorough and pleasing to the Lord. <laughs> and she forgives sins. She purifies the heart. All she's doing is purifying and forgiving and all her brother is doing is punishing and rectifying. This balance between justice and this type of kindness is actually how Krishna has created the universe. This balance and it has to be very carefully understood. And, and when Part of the beginning of the real balance between justice and forgiveness is to follow in the footsteps of Yamaraj and his sister Yamuna, which is to actually really appreciate people who have a different service than ourselves. Can anyone imagine Yamuna giving orders to the Yamadutas? She's the softest, sweetest. She's, she's an expansion of the Gopi Vishaka, who's an expansion of Srimati Radharani, who's flowing simply to give pleasure to Krishna. And by giving pleasure to Krishna, after Krishna and Sri Radharani left this world, she's giving them, she's giving people Krishna Prema. So here we find Yamaraj when he gets time off. He's just expressing his heart as it is <coughs> as Vidura. How Vidura in his ecstasy of loving service to Krishna, how he suffered how he was cast into so many complexities, perplexities. He was the son of Vyasdev. And a maidservant of Ambika, the queen of Vitrachavirya. And he had two brothers, Dhritarashtra and Pandu. But because of the nature of his birth, he was not given any inheritance of the kingdom, either in the property or in his role or position. He watched what Sritarashtra and his sons Duryodhana were doing. And he was always helping. He was right there in the inner core of Sritarashtra's meetings. 
and he was seeing what was going on and he was always speaking the truth. But he was always everyone's well-wisher, even if he totally disagreed. <coughs> when the plan was to burn alive in the house of lack, the five Pandavas and their mother, Kunti, it was Vidura who sent Yudhisthira Maharaj the information in a very, very secret, super intelligent way and how to escape. And at the same time, he was telling Dhritarashtra, don't do this. During the gambling match, he was chastising Dhritarashtra. This is cheating, don't do this. But Dhritarashtra was always listening to his son Duryodhana. In that assembly where Draupadi was stripped, Vidura was the best friend, well-wisher, and uncle of the Pandavas. And at the same time, in a very honest and truthful way, he was always a well-wisher of Duryodhana and Dhritarashtra. And after all this, and all the, out of his affection and deep concern for his brother, he was never what we would call a yes man, just yes, yes, yes. He didn't quit his service, but he was very honest. He was very blunt. And one day, he, when he saw the battle of Kurukshetra was about to happen, he said to Tritharashtra, your son, Duryodhana, is offense personified. His envy for the Pandavas will be the cause of the destruction of your entire dynasty. Come out of his control. Duryodhana heard this. He was so angry. He chastised Vidura. You son of a kept servant. who is taking everything from us, living only by us, and now you're speaking like this, betraying us? Get out from here. We will give you nothing more than the breath that you breathe. Srimad Bhagavatam describes that these harsh words were like arrows that touched the core of Vidura's heart. He was pained by it. It doesn't say he, but at the same time as being deeply pained, he was happy. He was grateful. Now he's officially being released and he could go out on pilgrimage. He had to leave his comfortable home. He had to leave his family. He was going to live years just wandering, living under trees. But this is the arrangement of the Lord. I could just go and be with saintly people, and I could be alone in the forest, and I can engage in devotional service. What would ordinarily be taken is the most horrible injustice he took as a blessing even though it was painful to the core of his heart and in this way he was happy and for years and years he wandered and here we find he's meeting on the bank of Yamuna Uddhava and transcendental sound vibration. The reality is the sound vibration 
is non-different than the actual pastime. And these pastimes, oh, it's almost end, are beyond time and beyond space. <laughs> So when we're hearing, we're there. Udav, from his earliest childhood, he loved Krishna and nothing but Krishna. Srila Prabhupada describes he played with dolls of Krishna. And when his mother would call him for breakfast, he didn't care. When she called him for lunch, he didn't care. He just wanted to serve Krishna. Krishna has proclaimed Uddhava as the best of the devotees. He was Krishna's intimate friend. Krishna would consult him in, in intimate subjects. They would sit together, they would lay down together sometimes and talk, they would walk together, they would make plans together. And out of the supreme love for Uddhava, Krishna sent him to Vrindavan with his message. Who else could he send with his message of love for the Brijabhasis but Uddhava? But actually, he was sending Uddhava so Uddhava could actually learn from the gopas and gopis what is the most deep, pure, loving devotional service for Krishna. This is described in Srimad Bhagavatam. It's described by our great Acharyas. Seeing the love of gopis, Sri Radha, and actually all the residents of Vrindavan, Uddhava was thinking, feeling, and knowing in his own heart that he had no love at all. It was insignificant in compared to the love of these devotees. And their love, as His Holiness Devamrita Swami Maharaj so wonderfully described yesterday, was their love and separation. Uddhava was about to go back to, to Mathura to be with Krishna. He was going to be his constant associate. But yet he was praying, let me be a gumalata, a little shrub of grass near Govardhan Hill. Because gopis, gopas, they may then step upon me. I can't ask the gopis for the dust of their lotus feet because I'm a great royal prince of the Yadu dynasty and they're simple cowherd girls. He didn't want to embarrass them. Sometimes we just grab dust from people's feet. <laughs> but he honored them so much. To get the dust of his feet, he was a powerful Rishi Damian prince. He could have taken it. But just to not hurt them, to express his profound reverence and appreciation for their devotion. He wanted to live as a piece of grass forever where the gopis may step on him. This was his way of understanding greatness. And how Uddhava is humbling himself before the residents of Vrindavan. And when Krishna came, and when Uddhava came back, what Srila Prabhupada is saying, Krishna and our parampara entrusts the devotees with this transcendental knowledge for the well-being of humanity. Srila Prabhupada writes, that Krishna spoke the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna and then he 
further developed those teachings in the Uddhava Gita, the 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he told Uddhava, you go to Badrigashram because the Yadu dynasty was going to be finished and Krishna was going to leave this world. And somehow or other, Uddhava stayed back to be with Krishna at that moment. And at that time, Maitreya Rishi, a disciple of, it, of Parasaramuni, the father of Yasudev, he happened to come and the two of them received the final instructions and blessings of Krishna. And then Krishna left the world. Uddhava's separation, he saw the, the nature of gopis and Sri Radharani's separation when he was in Vrindavan, but now Krishna had left him in the world. His separation, so inconceivable. He began to wander toward Badrigashram. And by Krishna's grace, on bank of Yamuna, he is now meeting Vidura. And Vidura, he had already heard about the news of the battle of Kurukshetra and Krishna's disappearance and the Yadu's disappearance. But still, he inquired about it. And Srila Prabhupada writes, his inquiry was psychological, not practical. That's a very deep statement. It was not an inquiry based on knowledge and information. It was an inquiry based on love, love and separation. And as Devamrita Maharaj and Bhakti Chaitanya Maharaj and Banu Maharaj the last few days were discussing that these pastimes are ever new when we understand that they're non different than Krishna. Material life, puna punas chara the We hear something, we get tired of it. But these pastimes, to the to the extent we actually love Krishna, they become newer and newer and we become more and more eager to hear them. Srila Prabhupada would quote Bhagavad Gita, Dehino Smin Yata Dehe, with newer and newer enthusiasm. Just to show mercy to us, to inform us, we're not our bodies, but also, these are directly the words of Krishna. Well, to speak of Krishna's pastimes. So Uddhava, it is described, he went to, into a deep state <coughs> of love and separation. He was paralyzed. He couldn't talk, he couldn't move. And then immersed in remembrance of Krishna and feeling the presence of Krishna in that separation, he spoke. He began his answer to Vidura about, Vidura was inquiring about all the different residents of Mathura and Dwaraka and how is Vasudeva and Devaki and, and he was praising Krishna in so many ways. Uddhava replied that the son of the world, Lord Krishna, has now set and now our home is being swallowed by the great serpent of time. 
what can I even say about what we do? And then for the next chap two chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam, Uddhava is remembering Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's qualities, and the philosophical truths of who Krishna is. And we have been swallowed by this, <laughs> by time. And <clears throat> It brings us to today's verse. Where after hearing Uddhava's wonderful glorifications and wonderful love for Krishna, which is unparalleled, Vidura is asking him for transcendental knowledge. Now Vidura is the age of Uddhava's father. He's his uncle. And although Uddhava knows everything most intimately, because Maitreya Rishi was of the same age of Vidura, he was like a father in age to Uddhava. Uddhava is instructing Vidura, you should go to Maitreya Rishi to learn these teachings. Because what Krishna taught me, he taught Maitreya Rishi. Such detachment. And this attachment is based on not just withdrawing ourselves from the center. But in bhakti, detachment is when we put Krishna in the center. And when we put those who are representing Krishna in the center, mat-bhakta puja Krishna's most pleased when we honor, worship, and serve those who love him. Maitreya, he may have previously been mixed with jnana and, and, and other aspects of the yoga system. After being blessed by Krishna, Uddhava, who was Krishna's inter, innermost best friend, trained by gopis, Go to Maitreya Rishi. Learn from him. And it's such a beautiful example. Srila Prabhupada is describing here, the devotees of the Lord wander the earth because they are entrusted with the transcendental knowledge of loving devotional service to the Lord. And how are they doing? wherever anyone is rendering loving service and spreading the holy names of the Lord to appreciate, to honor, to want to be the servant of servant, that is more dear to the Lord than when we get caught up in our ego to do it ourselves. Srila Prabhupada would look out at all of the students, say, you are all representatives of my Guru Maharaj. In one recording he said, by the grace of my Guru Maharaj, he has sent all of you to help me to serve him. Now I am entrusting you with the responsibility to help me in this service to my Guru Maharaj. To love Srila Prabhupada, how much we should love anybody who's doing that for Srila Prabhupada. How much that we'll love Srila Prabhupada 
and please him. And when Srila Prabhupada's talking about um, cooperation, that has a general meaning, which means don't fight. That's like a minimal. But actually, this idea of cooperation based on the teachings of Krishna consciousness, it means to express pure love for Krishna. The way Uddhava is toward Maitreya and even Vidura. And when Vidura goes to Maitreya in the next verses, Vidura is glorifying Maitreya and Maitreya is glorifying Vidura. And they're all in separation from Krishna. And here in Navadvip Dham, Lord Chaitanya, I'm going to end within two, three minutes, honest. <laughs> How did he start the Sankirtan movement? In the mood of intense separation. He came back from Gaia. And the Nimai Pandit that was very, very, you know, super confident of everything he was about, he was teaching and saying, he was now so humble. He said, I want to meet the devotees to reveal the sorrows of my heart. Come to Suklambar Brahmachari's house tomorrow. He had a little hut on the bank of the Ganges. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was just crying out, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? He said to Gadadhar Pandit, you are so fortunate. You have been loving and serving Krishna from your earliest childhood, but I wasted my life with mundane logic and knowledge. And finally, I saw Krishna and he left me. Total humility. He, he was crying, where is Krishna? And when Lord Chaitanya went back to his house, Sachi Mata saw Lord Chaitanya, Nimai, her son, literally according to Chaitanya Charitamrita and Chaitanya Bhagavad, he flooded the courtyard of the house with his tears, crying out, where is Krishna? It was on the basis of this love and separation of the gopis in Vrindavan that Uddhava personally witnessed. It was in that mood that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began the Sankirtan movement. His students would come around to learn grammar from him and he would just talk about Krishna and the names of Krishna. And every single word of every book, he gave a purport to glorify the name of Krishna. And sometimes he would be in such ecstasy doing so. And then he would come out of his ecstasy and ask the students, did I give a good lesson? <laughs> they said, it was a great lesson, but you didn't talk about the subject, you just talked about the name of Krishna. And this went through many phases. And finally he wrapped up his books and said, I can't teach anything but the glories of the names of Krishna anymore. So I, I, he said, I bless you all, find another teacher. And they all wrapped up their books and said, after having a teacher like you, there's nobody else who could teach us. We are going to follow you. <laughs> and at that point, Lord Goranga Prabhu taught them how to chant the names of Krishna. And they all had kirtan. And the people of Navadvip were astounded. That's how our Sankirtan movement began. And I'm going to end with this. One time a student very great scholarly student. He challenged Lord Chaitanya. You're talking about the name of Krishna with such glorification. The Vedas must be exaggerating just to get us to chant. 
And when Lord Chaitanya heard that challenge, he quoted this verse, Kale, Kali Kale Nama Rupe Krishna Avatar. Krishna has incarnated in his name. Krishna is non-different than his name. Absolutely non-different than his holy names. How can you exaggerate? Who could possibly even approach appropriately the glories of the Lord? How can we exaggerate the glories of Radha and Krishna in the spiritual world who are the creator, maintainer, and destroyer of all universes and the ultimate source of all love and happiness? Achintya Shakti. If we can never exaggerate the glories of Krishna, and Krishna is non-different than his name, we can never exaggerate the glories of the names. So everyone, take shelter. Hadar Nama, Hadar Nama, Hadar Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kalona Steva, Steva Gataranita, of the chanting of Krishna's holy name. Srila Prabhupada Ki Thank you very much.